Hello, and welcome to ELN Morning. On today's show, remembering 9-11, Leo Lambert reflects on a day in history that was meant for celebration, but turned tragic. Durham warming up to Oak House, how the three-month-old location is struggling to attract the same customer loyalty as the one in Elon. And here we go again, Mamma Mia coming to a theater near you. All that and more, ELN Morning starts right now. Good morning, Elon, and welcome to ELN Morning. I'm Amanda Gibson. And I'm Ashley Moran. Elon's Oak House is a staple of the community, but the three-month-old Durham location is struggling to gain the same attraction. I talked to the owners and customers about the new venue. After five years of success at his Elon location, co-owner Phil Smith knew it was time to branch out to his hometown. Even though he spends most of his time in Elon, he says he benefits from the Durham location in his own way. You know, even like my high school friends that still live in the area, like it's a big deal to them and family friends from long ago. It's like a kind of a thing for, you know, for me to have a connection with this business in, in downtown Durham. Fellow co-owner and Elon alumnus Ryan Vett now lives in Durham with his wife and college sweetheart, Jessica and the Durham Oak House gives them a taste of their Elon roots. For me, this is now where Jessica and I call uh, home, so Durham is now home for us. So for Phil and I, it's both sort of like a homecoming uh, to bring the Oak House to Durham. Smith and Vets say even though the financial benefits at Oak House in Durham don't match those at Elon, it is still early. But I have to stop and remind myself that when we opened here, that wasn't automatic. Now, we did open the doors and we were, we were pretty busy pretty fast. Um, but we didn't have that, the loyalty. Alonzo C. is a loyal Oak House customer. He graduated in 2018 and still spends his free time there. I think Phil would call me a loyal Oak House customer. Um, yeah, this place is kind of my second home um, and also just like a lot of where community for me happens here at Elon. C. also visited the Durham Oak House and his feelings didn't change. It was a good place to be and it felt, it, it felt just as much like home. And Vet says this home is here to stay for as long as Durham will allow. Vet says he and Phil are in no rush to expand Oak House further anytime soon. Their plan is to take it one step at a time. On September 11th, 2001, Elon was in the middle of a special college coffee, but the celebratory event soon turned tragic. Our Grace Morris has more on that day at Elon. I can't imagine that, I'll, that I will ever forget. 18 years ago, this courtyard filled with students in mourning. A special college coffee was being held here on Scott's Plaza the morning of 9-11. It was to celebrate the opening of the new Rhodes Stadium. The marching band was coming across Young Commons to Scott Plaza to, to play for college coffee. And at the same time, we were getting this news that planes were flying into the World Trade Center. President Emeritus Leo Lambert was president of Elon when 9-11 happened and remembers exactly how he felt when he heard the news. It's, it felt like the world was shifting underneath your feet and, and you wondered, will business continue as usual? But almost two decades later, freshmen barely remember that day. Because I have such visceral, real memories of it, they, they don't. Mark Dollhouse teaches a class on 9-11 and knows the value of learning the past. One of the things I emphasize to these students is that even though 9-11 happened before they were born or when they were just infants, the, the fact of the matter is, the reality is, is that 9-11 is, in many respects, a day that is not yet finished. But as the memories fade, the impact holds steady. The world is a different place, and, and we, we can never go back to what we were before 9-11. Grace Morris, ELN Morning. For more stories remembering the event of 9-11, check out our website, elonnewsnetwork.com.
The Elon community and Burlington Masjid are coming together to discuss the stigma around Muslims. On the 18th anniversary of 9-11, the local mosque and university departments hosted Muslim Media, a dinner and conversation centered around media coverage of Muslims. Monib Sayed, a member of the mosque, says generalizations about Muslims do have an effect. And they're hearing a whole bunch of negative things happening to Muslims just because of who they are and what they believe. You know, they felt like, you know, we should hide and, you know, just uh, try to blend in more. And Elon senior and multi-faith scholar Sonia Walker is researching proliferation of Muslims in the airline industry. Walker says having this discussion on the anniversary of 9-11 is one step to changing the stereotype. To have on this day that can be challenging for people. Um, so I think to have a new conversation and open new doors is really important as we move forward in the United States. To hear more from people at the Burlington Masjid, visit our website, elonnewsnetwork.com. We are still over a year out from the 2020 presidential election, but only 10 hours away from the third Democratic debate. Tonight, 10 of the highest polling Democratic candidates will face off for the third time. The debate, hosted by ABC News in partnership with Univision, will be held in Houston and will be the first time where all of the top-tiered candidates debate on one stage. If you're interested in tuning in, Elon Votes will host a nonpartisan watch party at 8 p.m. in the Mosley First Floor Lounge. Light snacks will be provided. Still to come from Illinois to North Carolina for a role in Mamma Mia this weekend. We'll explain coming up. And coming up after the break, I'll let you know if it's a good weekend to stay inside and go to Mamma Mia or hang out outside like I am right now. Stay tuned. A local community theater group is bringing the songs of ABBA to downtown Burlington. Over the next two weekends, the gallery players are performing Mamma Mia at the Paramount Theater. And while the group is centered in Burlington, not everyone in the cast is from North Carolina. Joel Irvin and his wife are from Illinois, but have temporarily relocated to Burlington. We drove down here to try out and receive parts. We went back, we picked up our RV, so we've been living in our RV the last eight weeks to be a part of this show. Chantel Burdick is from, is from Burlington, but Mamma Mia is her first show with the gallery players. Burdick says you can sense the love the cast has for each other. It is a bit of a roller coaster of emotions. So there's some like super like happy spots and then there's some spots that kind of like, ugh, you know, um, it's just fun. So like just come ready to have a good time. If you're not in a good mood when you come, I promise you will be when you leave. It's just fun. <laughs> to buy tickets, you can visit their website, galleryplayersonline.com slash tickets or call the box office at 336 228497. Maeve Ashbrook is live on Citrone Plaza with your Phoenix five day forecast. Maeve? So the theme for this week's Phoenix five day forecast is clouds. Except for today, we will be seeing mostly sunny skies. We've got a high of 96 and already I'm in the shade and it's pretty humid like it's been the last few days. But as far as the rest of the five days on Friday, we'll be seeing a high of 79 and a low of 36, 66 with some scattered thunderstorms, 30% chance though, so pretty slight. On Saturday, a high of 85 and some partly cloudy skies, like I said, and on Sunday, a high of 88 and those isolated thunderstorms are going to be back. Again, a 40% chance, so pretty slight, but with that, on those rainy nights might be a good idea to get inside, but also it might be a little less humid, so it might be a good day to go out and sit by the lake. As far as Monday and Tuesday, those highs are going to strike up just a little bit. We've got a high of 91 on Monday and a low of 88 or a high of 88 on Tuesday. But again, like I said, the theme is cloudy, so it's going to be partly cloudy skies, not so sunny. So we should be good, hopefully getting a little bit of this humidity out of the way as far as the next few weeks. That's all I've got for you today. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Maeve. This week is National Suicide Prevention Week. According to the National Institute of Health, over 1,000 college students between the ages of 18 and 24 take their lives each year. For Elon freshman Aaron Ponte, this week is about saving lives. 
if people are having problems, like you're not alone, and um, it's like much more common, unfortunately, than people make it out to be. And I think that the topics and like discussions that people should be having about mental health um, are things that we should be talking about more and bringing up more. This week hits close to home for students like Elon Jr. Victoria Gordon. When Gordon was 14, she almost took her own life. But it was a simple call from her friend inviting her to the mall that stopped her. She now values her life more than ever before. The idea of life and that everyone has the opportunity to live that. And sometimes it's the smallest nudge of you want to go to the mall. Or sometimes... It can be something a little deeper than that, and that's okay. Either way, everyone gets um, that opportunity to, you know, appreciate life. If you or someone you know is having suicidal thoughts, you can call the National Suicide Prevention Line at 1-800-273-8255. Or you can call Elon's 24-7 crisis counselor by calling Campus Police at 336-278-5555 and ask for the counselor on call. Coming up after the break, Sarah Hicks joined us live in the studio to teach us a recipe easy to make in your dorm. Welcome back. Making food can be a bit of a challenge as a student living in a dorm. And that's why we've asked Elon freshman Sarah Hicks to show us one of her quick and easy recipes that you can make from the comfort of your own room. Good morning, Sarah. Thank you so much for joining us today. Can Thank you tell you. me about what, you're, what we're about to make and eat? So this is just a simple oatmeal that is really versatile. You can add whatever you might have on hand. Um, That's and you can just make it right in your microwave. Okay, awesome. And so what's, what's the best things to add to this? What do you like doing when you make it for yourself? So normally I just put oats in a bowl, okay. add either whatever kind of milk you have or water, mm -hmm. and then microwave it for about two minutes. Okay. And then I'll usually cut up an apple. Awesome. And here. Okay, go ahead. I put go some apple on there. Amazing. Load it up with the apple. I'm eyeing oh, yeah. that chocolate over there. I feel oh, like yeah. I, oh, need yeah. to, I need to get some I chocolate would love incorporated some chocolate right into right my breakfast. These, these are cacao nibs here. Okay, oh, awesome. Uh -huh. I'll just I'll go a little crazy with that. Okay. Chocolate. <laughs> Thank you. Then we have some chia seeds. Okay. You can kind of just play with it. Awesome. Whatever you want. All right, go ahead and Hemp take a bite. Seeds. All right. And awesome. Go ahead. Tell me how it is. I'll take the spoon after you. <laughs> awesome. Delicious. So good. That's all the news we have for you today. Thank you for joining us. For all the news you need when we are not on the air, follow us on social media and head over to our website, elonnewsnetwork.com. On air, online, and in the stands, we are Elon News Network. Have a great day, Elon. <laughs>